Karma is like an accounting system, kind of a positive and negative, good stuff, maybe things that you disappoint, kind of keeps track of that. Are we afraid of karma or is it a good tool? Karma is a blessing used to teach us responsibility. That's one of the reasons we're down here, to learn to give and receive love and learn to be responsible children of God and gain spiritual maturity. Karma is kind of like a grading system to help us do that. You pick up negative karma when you have do some things that aren't so positive, but you also pick up karma. Why did we use the word sin instead of karma? Is karma more clear or is sin more clear in this case? Any thoughts on that? Yeah. Oh, sin only connotates negative. Yeah. And when you refer to the accounting system, you've got both sides of it. Yeah, karma is kind of positive and negative. You get good credits and maybe some negatives. And we're trying to balance it out pretty much. Or sin, is that how you all feel is more of a negative? I'm not sure how you could say sin is a positive. So do we, do we feel that the word karma is more, more balanced than just using the word sin? Yes. Yet most Christians, the word karma I don't think comes up. It's only sin. Let's jump to the next one. We do not believe that a child of God is born in sin, though the child may have karma from a former life. Karma, God's accounting system, explains our birth circumstances better than the concept of sin. Do you ever wonder how many Christians or former Christians leave Christianity because they cannot accept that their child, this beautiful little child, is born already a sinner? And you see that's a problem for some. It's a shame that people leave a path they love because of something like that. So we're we saying sin is not a good expression and that karma is a better way to explain a child's birth. It might have karma because it had a former life. Where Christians generally believe you only have one life. So are you more comfortable with sin or more comfortable with karma? Karma. karma. But that word might make some people uncomfortable. You sound like you know, you're on a whole different path. I think karma explains the, the child's birth into the type of family the wealth, the health, the country they're born in, based on what they did before, and what lessons. Are they born in with karma to be punished, or what would be the best lesson for them based on how they did last time in a former life? But if you don't believe in former lives, this doesn't make sense. So we love Christianity and Jesus, but the idea of one life doesn't, doesn't make sense anymore to us. I can see a lot of people that love Jesus and Christianity, but they look at their cute little baby and they say that and they just don't believe that it's, it's a sinner. It was just born. He didn't have time to do anything. But it, we know it's been born in the, before. It's had a long, long life and soul. So it does have an accounting system where it's done some good stuff and some things maybe not so good. So the word karma, our understanding of karma, does it fit better? A child was born with karma, but the idea it's a sinner, the moment it comes out and it's sitting there just, hi, can you see the rub with that or disconnect? So we do not believe that a child is born in sin, though it may have karma from a former life. Now, a Christian, traditional Christian, wouldn't be comfortable with this. The word karma is scary, and they don't believe in former lives. They believe in one life. So karma explains better the family, the country, the circumstance, the health, the looks of the child, its capabilities is based on its karma, not on sin. To believe our actions in past lives, former lives, have an impact on the type of life we're born into, the next life. Mm -hmm. We all come for that? Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> And is it punishment primarily, or is it to teach you what you didn't learn in the last life? Jesus. Yeah, it's actually a blessing. God will put you in a spot that will balance out what you learned or did not learn in a former life. It's not all about punishment, although it might feel that way. Okay? I think it just makes more sense to us. We know we have many lifetimes. 
We create positive and negative. And God loves us so much that he'll give us new lifetimes to try to balance out the negative and learn what we didn't learn so well in the former life. It just almost feels intuitive, doesn't it? Now what about Jesus forgives? You do a 20-second prayer, sinner's prayer, and everything's perfect, it's all, everything's cleaned up. Are you comfortable with that? It's a good start, but it's a little more involved. It takes time to clean up a lot of bad karma, right? But you think the divine will give you more attention and try to help you at that point? Because you've, with a sinner's prayer, you're basically asking for help. So is that a good thing when a Christian does the sinner's prayer and 20-second prayer and people say they're all born again, they're all fine? Do we feel that it's all fine or it's a really good start? start. It's a good start. It's a good start, but it takes time. And some Christian preachers like Joel Osteen, I think, figures you're fine. Everything's perfect now after 20 seconds. Somebody I would think more like Joyce Myers thinks it's probably a good start. And we're probably more in line with which? Joyce? It's a good start. So, let's see. So, do we believe Jesus or a prophet can remove karma? Yeah. We see it up here. Sometimes it's so overwhelming you can't even get started. So, it gives you like a starter kit. helps you out a little bit. But if... If a prophet, including Jesus, did it all for you, remember why we're sent down here in the first place, to learn to be more mature, to make better decisions, right? Mm -hmm. So if, if a prophet, including Jesus, took it all off of you, and you didn't have to do a thing, would that be counter to why we were down here in the first place? Mm -hmm. To learn to do some stuff ourselves. <coughs> but what if it's so over... You're so overloaded with karma that you almost can't get a start. Can a prophet give you kind of a little bit of a break there? Yeah. Are we comfortable with that? Mm -hmm. Does anybody feel that a 20-second prayer and you're, it's all wiped out? Good to go. Anybody feel that? Would that be, if that's true, would that be in your best interest? Mm -hmm. Look at it another way. Would you learn responsibility? Would you learn what we're down here to learn? But what if you didn't get any help? Could it be so overwhelming you, you couldn't even move forward? Right? So there's a balance. Have you experienced up here sometimes by the grace of a little weight's off your shoulder so you at least move a little bit? You're untied a little bit. The ball and chain's removed so you have a fresh start but you still have to do some on your own. That, that's a major, a fundamental difference with, I think, the Christian church and, and how we see it. And I think we're seeing it the way it was originally taught. And over time, it becomes expedient to get a bigger following, to just wave a wand and say, like Joel Osteen, I like him, but I don't think 20 seconds makes everything okay. Because you can't learn anything if it's all taken care of. You're still loved. You may be forgiven, but we're down here to learn responsibility. That's why God sent us down in the first place, right? So if it was all taken care of, it doesn't, then the reason we're down, that could have been taken care of at the ocean. So there's a balance. Have you found up here that you get enough help to get you past where you're not just frozen, where you get moving again? You're given by grace of God enough help and forgiveness to get going to where you can help yourself a little bit. It's a balance. So we're saying a prophet or Jesus can't remove karma. We see that up here. But it's also to remove it all would be a disservice and you wouldn't learn, right? If, if it was totally removed. Is that how we feel? So it's a balance. Remove enough to help you out as a gift of love, but also you, do you feel better about yourself if you do some on your own? So if a prophet removed it all, it's taken away a chance to build confidence and, it, you know, and there's no reason to change. So we agree, Jesus or any prophet can remove karma. Yeah. When necessary to help us get started, to get you, get you moving again. And you're so locked down with stuff you can't even move. Whatever you want, just your past just erased? Or do you, you feel like you want to be responsible to the point that you're capable? 
I think that over time the preachers started teaching. They got quick, more and more. Just do your do your uh, twenty second center prayer, and you're all good. You're born again. I think that's. I don't think that's true, and I don't believe that was the original intent of forgiveness. Right. Otherwise, there's no sense of having you down here. God could have done that at the ocean, and there wouldn't be the fall. You wouldn't have to come down here. The point is, you come down here, and that's our guiding light from the 12th heaven where we were not very responsible. If God doesn't help you some by forgiving some and giving you a break on some, you probably couldn't get moving. But if he does it all, he could have done that at the ocean. Right? There's a balance. We're supposed to learn responsibility down here. And God loves us so much, he helps us. And if it's too much, we can't move. He takes some away, at least temporarily. But if he took it all away, he could have done that at the ocean. There's no sense of being down here. So if God took away all karma, all sin, in 20 seconds, couldn't he have done that at the ocean and not have to come down here in the first place? We're down here to learn to be more responsible, more mature. And that means doing some of the stuff that we can do. The forgiveness covers things that we're just not strong enough to do. So the divine can hold the karma. Can it even give it back when you're stronger? And give a little bit back. So we're still see, saying Jesus and the prophet can remove karma when necessary. But there's a balance between us also doing what we need to do and not a total free ride. Otherwise, there's no sense for us coming down here. God could have done that at the ocean. Mm 